Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. I have got a really cool new Seiko design for you today. Today we have the Seiko 5 Sports Bottle Cap 100 meter automatic, and this is model number SRPC61K1. And as usual, we're gonna open this thing up, look at all the features and functions, check out the build quality, and then I'll let you know what I think of this really interesting new Seiko. Also, make sure you check out my Amazon shopping channel for all of my favorite watches that I reviewed on this channel, and be sure to visit my Teespring merch store and pick yourself up a t-shirt or a mug. I'll make sure to put both of those links in the description field for you. So you've seen the watch box a million times, times let's go ahead and skip past all the boring stuff you know there's a manual inside you also know there's a, uh, a warranty card inside so let's go ahead and skip past all that boring crapola let's talk about this watch man I love the looks of this watch really really cool new design from Seiko as usual I'll go ahead and put all the specs on the left hand side of the screen and we'll talk about this thing all right all right, here we go. You're looking at a 42 millimeter case. It's 13 millimeters thick. It's 47 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, it has a 20 millimeter bracelet. It's got a hard lex crystal. Uh, it's got a 4R36 movement with 41 hours of power reserve. It is windable, it is hackable. It's water resistant to 100 meters, which is 330 feet. Of course, it has Luma Bright for the loom. It has a non screw down crown over here at four o'clock. It has the date and day features both over there at three o'clock. And it has what I call a, a soft click bezel. It has a 120 click soft click bezel. And I'll explain that a little bit later. So here you go, man. I love the overall look of this watch. Just a fantastic new design. And you can really see why it deserves that bottle cap moniker. It really does look like a bottle cap. Really, really cool looking watch. But when you look at it from the back, it's kind of like your typical Seiko 5 uh, C3 case back. You wouldn't really think that the watch on top is, is not, I wouldn't say drastically different, but it's really a different looking design. I like it. And I think it's kind of an optical illusion. Uh, the watch looks bigger than it actually is because the bezel is so thin. So it makes the dial a lot bigger. Uh, also, the indexes are pretty big on the dial themselves, and especially that one at 12 o'clock. So you have oversized indexes, but a thinner bezel. So I think it gives the illusion that the watch is actually a lot bigger than it is. I think it's pretty cool. So let's talk more about the dial. You have an applied Seiko logo and a Seiko 5 logo, and Seiko knows how to apply these logos better than anybody else, I think, in the watch industry. Uh, Remember that watch I reviewed about a week ago, the Boliva Oceanographer? That had the absolute worst applied logo I had ever seen on a watch. And I love it when a, when a watch company does it right, and Seiko definitely does it right with any of their logos on their watches. Really, really cool. Super legible watch. You have a really dark dial. Uh, and of course, these bright white indexes and hands. I like the sword hands. Uh, I like the really skinny needle second hand. Uh, everything is loomed except for that second hand, by the way. I like the bezel around the day and date functions over there at three o'clock. I think that really differentiates the day and date from the dial, which I really appreciate. Uh, everything else about the dial is pretty simple. I mean, nothing major, no, no Cyclops or anything like that. So let's talk about the rest of the case. The pretty much brush services everywhere you go. You have a non-signed, uh, non-screw down crown over here at, uh, four o'clock. So, I mean, nothing really remarkable about the case. The really, I wouldn't say remarkable, but the interesting thing about the watch is this bezel. It really does look like a bottle cap. <laughs> it's really cool. Now, if you notice, this case has the short lugs. Like a lot of those new Solar Tuna divers, this has the short lugs. Really cool, man. I like it. I like that look. Cool. So let's talk about the uh, case back. Nothing really interesting about the case back here. You have your laser etching around the uh, perimeter of the uh, the window there. Um, that's really about it, man. I mean, it's a screw down case back, and that's really all there is to tell you about it. <laughs> uh, typical Seiko clasp. This is stamped metal. Uh, you know, for watching this price range, this is kind of what I would expect. Uh, you've got what four micro adjustments there. Typical Seiko bracelet. Uh, you know, signed Seiko clasp right there. I mean, just your typical Seiko bracelet that really, you know, gets the job done. No frills. You know, it doesn't have a machined clasp back here. It's just stamped metal. Uh, no screw-in links. They're, you know, they're, they're pin and collar. So, I mean, you know, this is kind of what you expect from a kind of a, you know, low to mid-tier Seiko watch. But it does the job very well and has been doing the job very well for a very long time. So, um, what else did I want to tell you about this thing here? Um, 
Guys, I, I'm not sure if this watch is going to turn into a legend or not. I think it actually might. Uh, prices for this are just varying wildly all over the internet. Creation Watches has it for $185. Amazon had it for $220. Now it's $300. Uh, and eBay only has maybe one or two listings. I think they're about $200. So I think the market's trying to decide where they want to put this watch price-wise. Uh, but I think it might become a legend. I think it might turn into a monster or maybe a tuna. I'm not quite sure. It's that unique and interesting, at least to me, that's my humble opinion. Uh, but I think it might turn into a legend, just a really, really cool looking watch. Now there are, I think, three or four different variations. They have a brown one, and then they have an IP coated blue bezel. This one's definitely the best looking of all of those. I would highly recommend this one. Again, you know, that's my personal preference. If you like the brown, go get the brown. If you like the blue, go get the blue. But I think this one just looks cooler. Uh, it reminds me kind of of tuna, of a tuna, to tell you the truth. I mean, it just kind of looks like a really small tuna. And uh, that bezel is just so cool, man. I like that. Really, really cool. I'm trying to think of anything else that I uh, forgot to tell you. All right, let's go ahead and check out this loom. Let me go ahead and kill the studio light. Let's kill this monitor. And let's zap this thing. All right. Now, y'all know how famous Seiko's Lumabrite is, so you really know what to expect here. Let's go ahead and give this a good zapping. I like that purple hue, by the way. Kind of reminds me of Thanos. <laughs> All right, there you go. You know really what you expect from Seiko's Lumabrite. An even distribution of loom all over the indexes and hands. That nice, nice green color. Uh, like I said earlier, the second hand is not loomed. But do you really need a second hand loomed? I mean, I don't know. Some people do, I guess. But there you go, man. Just your typical uh, great application. Now, this is not going to be as long-lasting as like the Loom on a Monster or something. It's still got that really nice green color, and it does last a while. Just not as long as one of the uh, the divers. So there you go. All right, man. Just a great-looking new design. I mean, this is a fantastic-looking watch. Uh, you know, it's not a diver. It's only 100 meters water-resistant, so you're not going to get any dive functionality out of it. Uh, this is, you know, I think this is a level above a beater watch. I wouldn't consider this a beater. Of course, you know, if you wear it long enough, it'll end up turning into a beater. But, um, I mean, I like it. I'm trying to think of anything, anything else to tell you about the watch. Guys, that's really about it. Now, if I am correct, I think I just noticed something. Holy crap, those are drilled lugs. Are you kidding me? Wow, look at that. Drilled lugs on a Seiko 5. <laughs> I did not expect that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So guys, if you want one of these, go out there and get one again. Like I said, right now on Amazon, it's about $300, which I think is a little overpriced. But I guess people are snapping these up like crazy. So just, you know, go out there and find it. I'll go ahead and put a link uh, to my Amazon channel if you want to pick this one up on Amazon. And also, hey, make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you click that notification bell. All of us YouTubers really need you to do that um, so you can get all of our new updates and new videos for your viewing pleasure. So guys, that's been about it. Again, this has been the Seiko 5 Sports Bottle Cap 100 meter automatic. And this particular model number is SRPC61K1. This has been a pretty quick review because there's not really too much to go over about the watch. But uh, I hope you liked it. And until the next review, I will see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>